Magic Johnson goes on ESPN and says, look, the Lakers losing, but not our fault. <laughs> Do you want to know what LeBron did? Team Moto Productions presents A Night of Laughter with the legendary Queen of Comedy, Monique, and Friends. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting like one, and then you're getting extras. At the Duke Energy Center for the Performing Arts Raleigh Memorial Auditorium. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster. You're going to have to be here if you want to get to the lab. DBN Jack Frost. Mike, What's up, party people? I so yeah. So apparently, <laughs> I just want to be clear on this. Magic Johnson, and therefore. I'm going to say Jeannie Buss and the L.A. Lakers blame LeBron James for the Lakers losing season. Okay. Now, to be 100% correct, I'm not sure if the uh, Lakers are over 100, um, pardon me, are over 50% or not. Um, that would make them having a winning season or a losing season. What I mean by that is currently, I believe they're 10th in the um, West and they need to have like a play-in game or they're lucky if they can make it to the play-in game in order to get into the playoffs currently. I think they need uh, to win like four of their last games or all of their last games and they need like, uh, I believe, uh, the Spurs to like lose two or something like that. Anyway, with that being said, Magic Johnson. He goes on, uh, for everybody that don't know, they have this incredible show on ESPN. Um, it comes on in the morning. It's incredible. I have to start watching it again. I haven't watched it in months. Um, it's not ESPN. It's the Get Up. Absolutely love it. It has uh, Greeny on there. So, Magic Johnson goes on. I'm not 100% sure he was speaking to. When I saw the clip, it was just him talking. So, Magic Johnson goes on Get Up. I'm assuming it's Get Up because of the, uh, the background, uh, the stage they was on. And basically what he says is, the Lakers could have had DeMar DeRozan. I'm going to say this again. The Lakers could have had DeMar DeRozan. Now, I want to rewind back a while back, a real long time back. Somebody came in here and y'all was asking me about uh, basketball like, like a year ago, whatever the case is. Around the same time that they was having uh, this particular um, offseason. When they was having a free agency and it was time for uh, players to move. And we actually spoke about DeRozan. I'm part of me. We spoke about the Rosen wanting to go back to the Lakers because he wanted to play in L.A. I think around the same time, we were also speaking about how uh, Kawhi wanted to go back to uh, L.A. And also, just so we can be clear, um, uh, Westbrook also wanted to go back to L.A. They're all from this area. If we know, Kawhi ended up going to the Clippers. And so, therefore, the Rosen was open before he went to the Bulls to go to the Lakers. But what happened was, LeBron James gets into a conversation. This is the way... I'm, I don't know what to tell you. LeBron James gets into a conversation with Russell Westbrook and the guys, the way Magic Johnson puts it. And they decide to come up with this new idea where Russell Westbrook comes to the Lakers. Why is this such a big, big deal? Because Russell Westbrook coming to the Lakers is why they had to move some of their young talent who is now on other teams doing well. Uh, it was believed by Matt Johnson, I believe he said, the only player they would have probably had to move was Kuzma. And that's for salary cap purposes. But other than that, I mean, pardon me, the only player they would have had to move, move was Kuzma. What I'm saying is they probably would have had to let Caruso go also because of salary cap purposes. So Caruso would have probably had to go. But the other young core would have been there. Now, could I say something real quick? What is one of the Lakers' biggest flaws, if not the Lakers' biggest flaw? And that's their inability to play defense. I'm going to say something real quick. When I was a kid, and I used to go to the park and play. And when I say kid, I mean between the ages of like 17 and like 23, 22. All right? So I'm going to the park to play, right? I mean, I was still like the... I was a beast at 25 between 25 and probably 32 i played the best basketball i've ever played in my life but that's not the point um 
probably 25 to about 30, 34, 35. I'm still a beast. Anyway, so I used to go to the park. And you know how niggas go to the park and they want to get all their best friends on their team. But all of their best friends all want the ball. Nobody passed the ball. Nobody played D. So I used to go to the park and I used to literally pick up the people that I know are going to play defense. You know, the people that barely get a chance to get on the court. The people that's going to play hard. So basically, what LeBron did was he traded the people that were going to play hard for the people who wanted to be friends. And the people that want to be friends, you know what y'all going to do on the court? Y'all going to argue. You're not going to get along with one another. You're going to be blaming one another. You're going to be pointing fingers. But when y'all need to win, nobody's pointing fingers. Everybody is holding themselves accountable for their own actions. I'm going to tell you the thing that I really, really get upset about. When we're playing, there needs to be a leader. When we're doing anything, there needs to be a person that is in charge. There needs to be one vision. Now, what Magic Johnson is trying to explain is... The Lakers had a vision. They already had AD, they have LeBron James, and they were gonna go get DeMar DeRozan, a hard-working player. Do y'all see what DeMar DeRozan is doing for the Bulls right now? Um, Tatum says something about quite possibly winning the MVP next year, but if DeMar DeRozan makes, uh, keeps making these improvements like he's been making through, these, um, uh, through the off-season off season in these exact increments, I don't see no reason why he shouldn't be in the conversation next year also. Shit, isn't he in the conversation this year? With that being said, Magic Johnson 100% put the blame on LeBron James for this season. Magic Johnson, could we clap it up for Magic Johnson? Can we put some claps down in the comment section, please? Magic Johnson is one of the first, or should I say the first uh, uh, big... Uh, executive that had real clout that came out and explained what the actual issue is that LeBron James effed up. Now, there's been a lot of people in sports that have been telling you for years, LeBron James messes up teams. People just passes up on it because they want LeBron James on their team because he's considered to be the best player now. He's all Michael Jordans. We need him. But I want to explain something. I need everybody to think that they know basketball to go back and watch the 1988, 1987, and 1989 Pistons. I need you to go watch that team. Quite possibly one of the greatest players ever to play, Isaiah Thomas. We don't even mention him as one of the greatest players ever to play because people don't even understand the impact that he had on that team. Did they make a trade here and there? Yes, they did. But guess what? You're supposed to coach your guys up. You're supposed to want young players on your team. Young, enthusiastic players on your team. You're supposed to want those guys. You're supposed to want the kids on your team. The young players on your team that's going to go out there and work hard. That's going to bust their ass. That you already know the way to get there. But they're at the point in their particular careers where they still have so much upside that you could put things into them as far as skills, as far as mentality that can not only help keep your your career, hold your career with longevity, but also boost your current situation. Now, with that being said, I want y'all to be clear. When have you ever seen LeBron James coach up a player? And I'm not talking about a vet. I'm not talking about a vet. I'm talking about a young player. When have we seen LeBron James coach up young players? When he was young, he couldn't do it. He was young. I'm going to give him a pass. But now, him in his older years, what does he do? He go to teams. He trades the young players. Tell me where I'm wrong. And he goes and he gets his vet friends. I'm going to say something, and this is going to be so unpopular. But I'm going to say something, and this is going to be so unpopular. But listen. LeBron James and Kyrie Irving could have won three or four rings together. Easy. Easy. If they stop making adjustments every offseason and instead of trading out players, they just work together and build team chemistry with the other players that were on the team. It's great to be a dope one on one player, but there's nothing in the world like being a team player. That's just my perspective on this. Put it down in the comment section. Magic Johnson literally saying that they would not have the no defensive capability Russell Westbrook 
the bad shot brick chucking Russell Westbrook. The I don't even know any more ways to describe how much I do not like Russell Westbrook's game. I want to explain something. Russell Westbrook is only ever good when he's athletic. Now think about that. Think about what we hold individuals high esteem for in every genre of competition. We hold them in high esteem for their athletic ability, yes, but for their dedication to the craft. That's what we hold them in high esteem for. When, when a player loses their athleticism, they're supposed to have something else there. At that point, that's when their experience takes in. That's when all of the shit that they've been working, that they've been teaching the youth for all of those years, that when, when, when they was in their prime, that's when that kick in. That's when your footwork kick in. That's when your instincts kick in. Explain to me why, Le why, not pardon me, not LeBron James, but explain to me why Russell Westbrook lacks all of those things. It's because he's been getting by on his, his athleticism primarily, on his athleticism. Russell Westbrook doesn't even have any dribbling moves, y'all. Tell me where to lie at. Every once in a while he do the sham. Sham literally taught him that move. That's a fact. I think there's a video out. But Russell Westbrook don't even have any personal dribbling moves. Every fucking... Hold on. Stop everything. Hold on. Every upper tier superstar point guard has a signature dribbling move that they do. Where is Russell Westbrook's? Like, comment, subscribe. Join the notification gang. Hashtag Bronx Bombers. Let's get it. I love y'all. Take care of each other. Hug the kids for me. I haven't forgotten about you. And that's all I get on this one. I'm out.